Men going their own way. M G T O W. Mitao. Uh, it's going to be the subject of this video. Every time I make a video around the subject of feminism, I get comments from people claiming to be MGTOW or making reference to MGTOW. I think a lot of my audience might be composed of MGTOW um, identifiers or uh, men's rights activists in general. Um, certainly a lot of my audience is male. So I've been doing a little bit of research, uh, just sort of casually um, reading what um, some MGTOW have to say, watching videos. I've been watching Karen Strawn in particular. Um, I think she's a um, very clever lady and a lot of these big towers do seem to have um, a lot of interesting things to say. I am concerned about the inadequacies in the laws, uh, divorce laws and family court in general. Uh, it does seem just from the research I've done that big tower right in that it is unfairly balanced towards women in family court and men can often have their lives ruined by a bad divorce um, by their ex-wives and I guess I should start off with saying that um, that is a tragedy. Like I said in my red pill video, um, someone who has who's not allowed to see their children until the age of 18, uh, someone who is only very rarely allowed to see their children, alimony can certainly be unfair to, um, to men a lot of the time. It's a problem. <laughs> It's something that definitely needs some attention and um, I'd really like to see some uh, some change to laws or some people trying to get the laws changed uh, and to raise awareness for this issue. I don't think making a conscientious objection to the institution of marriage is the right way of going about it if what you're doing is um, in a form of protest. If you think that if enough men stop marrying then um, government is going to start listening to you, I think that's not going to work unless you get an awful, you know, an awful lot of men involved. Certainly just getting the culture to change by having it a topic that gets talked about I think is probably the best thing that could be done about it at the moment, but you know, what do I know? <laughs> the MGTOWs that I've come across seem to fall into a number of camps or a few different flavours of uh, MGTOW and there are certainly ones who are better than others um, in terms of my opinion of them. There seem to be some that are using MGTOW as a kind of ideology and by that I mean that they they say the same things all the time. I see the same different people saying the stating the exact same statistics and pointing out the exact same facts. They seem to be just a tool for the ideology basically. Jordan Peterson um, said, I think he does say, that sometimes you have ideas and sometimes ideas have you. And I think that's definitely true of, of MGTOW. Sometimes they, um, it, it particularly seems to be the uh, the men who have had a bad divorce in the past, they seem to have uh, some wisdom, um, some experience. Um, they are the, um, they seem to be not misogynistic. They're just frustrated and they've been betrayed. And it's certainly very, it's a very difficult thing to get over. Um, being betrayed like that. I don't judge any individual who wants to not marry. That's um, that's your own personal choice, of course. Um, I don't think you have a duty to marry. I don't think you uh, you're, you should be required to marry um, if you don't want to, or if you do want to and you never find someone. Um, it's more a case that I think certain um, certainly the younger men who are MGTOW, I think might be missing out. Once you start getting deep into um, MGTOW kind of forums, you, I kind of get this impression of, sometimes it's overt and sometimes it's a kind of subtle um, disdain for women or talking about women as if they are uh, manipulative or they are not very intelligent, they are um, entitled and they, uh, they don't care about your feelings and they are hypergamous. This hypergamy gets um, thrown around a lot. From what I've read, it sounds like um, a lot of men think that um, hy hypergamy or marrying up is something that women um, cannot resist and will always do. So if um, if you get married and uh, you lose your job or um, you get ill, then um, 
your wife will um, certainly leave you um, because you can no longer provide for her or if she finds someone who's richer than you she'll leave you for him and honestly I don't think there's enough I don't think there's anyone alive who can really say how much that's true because you you can only have a few marriages in life um, some people have quite a few but uh, it's it's a kind of non-testable hypothesis although certainly hypergamy does make sense from an evil evolutionary point of view it's it's not a case of just because it there's a reason evolutionarily for women to do it it doesn't mean they necessarily will there are things that um people have evolved to do that they no longer um practice in i mean men are evolved for hunting but they don't not all men go hunting <laughs> i want to talk about this idea of risk um, and karen Strawn um put this the, the best i think uh talking about the how the law favoring women means that any woman you marry could um, ruin your life in a divorce. It's not the fact that all women do this, it's the fact that any of them could do it, um, they're permitted by law to do it if they choose to. And that is, uh, that's definitely a problem, but what to do about it now if you're a, um, a young man who um, is making these decisions about your life, whether you're going to marry, what kind of job you're going to have. If you're an unmarried man and you believe that the possibility of having your life ruined in a divorce is enough to um, keep you from marriage, then I of course um, support your right to make that decision. But I would like to explore the um, what I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks about um, the other risks that used to be involved with marriage uh, until a few hundred years ago. Before medical technology had advanced to what it is today, many more women died in childbirth and many more children died in childbirth. And uh, before, uh, before nations became as wealthy as they are now, many children um, died before the age of 10. Um, I was trying to find some exact figures and put them in the description, but every one of your ancestors took, the ri took those risks. Um, every every ancestor going back um, before about 100 years ago, 100, 200 years ago, you were part of a line of successful reproduction going back for millions of years. And the your ancestors who reproduced to make your the rest of your ancestors weren't stupid. They knew the risks. The, the link between sex and childbirth has been known for a fairly long time and the the associated risks of childbirth and um and child death are also very apparent to those people involved societies have been encouraging marriage pair bonding and um child and reproduction for a reason um not that it's your societal duty as i stated before but even on a personal scale i think there are lots of um benefits to marriage if you plan to never get married in your whole life I think you really have to have a good idea of what you're going to spend your life doing certainly I'm sure some people can make themselves happy with um, reading books and uh, being creative having a good career and if that's your decision that's fine but I think there are many rewards that are associated with um, finding someone you love marrying them and making children and and maybe you don't want to take advice from um, a, a girl in her early 20s who's only been married for less than a year. I mean, what do I know? I'd have no idea about the things that can ruin a marriage. But I come from a family of good marriages. I've been surrounded my whole life by the um, certainly not perfect marriages, but the successful and equally ben the mutually beneficial relationships of my parents and my grandparents. And that's the sort of thing that um that makes an influence on me um it's it, i know that it's possible to for two people to spend their lives together for what um 50 years or 55 years i suppose my grandparents have been married and um they they need each other you know they're not i don't know what they do without each other honestly and just seeing the the family that they've made them um, the you know their their three children and the 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 children that their children have had and the amazing um lives of all of us that have come out of that and the you know they've 
they've got to watch us grow up and contribute to our lives and pass on their wisdom to us um you get to create your own it's like a family is like your own little world i think um and i'm looking forward to creating my own little world one day um and i have to face the possibility that my marriage might end in divorce but it's a possibility that's worth it obviously needs to be considered but when considering the the benefits of marriage the risks of losing it are what else are you going to do <laughs> am i supposed to be i'm not going to subject myself to being lonely for the rest of my life or going from relationship to relationship without sticking to one for a long time um just because i'm worried that a marriage might end badly um that doesn't seem like a good plan for happiness to me this idea of hypergamy is one that i um hear about a lot uh, related to MGTOW and I, I see a lot about how women are um they they only care about money money or they are extremely attracted to uh, success and money and you can understand why a woman would want that kind of security that comes with um a man who has a a job uh rather than a man who has no career prospects or um not a very good job i mean a job is a sign of uh you know intelligence and hard working uh diligence um lots of good qualities responsibility you want to know that your man is able of able to take on responsibilities bundled in with this idea of hypergamy seems to be the idea that your wife doesn't really love you and if you get married then she's only marrying you for your money and for the support that you can give her um and i just don't i don't think that's true i visited my grandfather's cousin recently i've never i've, I've only met her once before in my life and she was talking about her husband who had died about uh five or six years before she was she wasn't in the grieving stages anymore she said something that really stuck with me she said she said she would sell everything that she owns and live in a tent in a field um if she could just live with her husband again if she could she'd live in a tent in the field with him if it meant spending their lives together again because he you know he he died early and she just she just missed him <laughs> she just missed him so much that she she'd give everything she owned just to have him back maybe that sounds soppy and maybe you don't believe that but i believe it because that's how I feel about my husband and that's how my parents feel about each other and that's how my grandparents feel about each other and they didn't have to tell me that and I just know from how they interacted that's true that's a happy marriage is the, like the most valuable thing you could possibly pursue there's um you know eternal fame and uh you know becoming a millionaire I mean I don't think <laughs> I don't think those people are happy isaac newton's name will probably go down in history for probably thousands of years as the as a pioneer of physics and um, mathematics and science but he who knows if he was happy i mean he could have been but i, I see i see mig's house talking about how much a marriage can cost you or how much your wife how much of your uh, income is going to be spent by your wife and how much of it's going to go towards your kids and it's it all i i can't help but feel a little bit um a little bit bad for those people that they they don't even know how valuable a, a good relationship is i mean if you just think that uh, a, a woman or a wife is just some it's just a um something for your sexual pleasure and you know someone who uh, does the washing up for you uh it's <laughs> that it's like a, a black hole for money it's i don't think that's how it is and you can make fun of me for being naive if you want um just a bit of housekeeping to finish with i'm going to be at the jordan peterson lecture in london in january with my husband if you want to go i think there are still tickets if you do go um you can look out for me and uh, feel free to say hi if you like just um you can address me as poe and i'll uh i'll know who you're talking about <laughs> so maybe i'll see you there usually um i ask you all to leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section but i have a feeling that this comment section is not going to be as as nice as it usually is 
so you can if you want but i might not recommend it uh, i guess we'll see um thank you for watching i'll see you again soon